Hello and welcome to this presentation describing how you actually follow the maintenance reliability transformation process. I'm assuming that you've probably already seen some videos that talk about it in general, the 12 steps, 78 recommended practices, but how is it all going to work? Well, that's what we'll take a look at in this video. So, as I mentioned, you've got the 12 steps and 78 recommended practices and all the training that helps you understand the background and the philosophy and all of that and then videos on the 12 steps and the 78 recommended practices. So you've got all of that that you can follow. Um, you can also buy the book. There is a book, Breaking Out of the Reactive Maintenance Cycle of Doom, which describes all of this and describes the 12 steps and recommended practices. Uh, if you buy a solo and um, team, you can look at a PDF version of it online as well. Um, but with the quick start version of product, you've got four months access to those videos. And, well, you can follow the process that I'm about to describe, but four months really isn't enough. You know, you can make a start if you just want to save some money and try to prove to yourself that you think this is going to work, then, you know, that, that's fine. By the way, if you're wondering what that chart there is on the right, um, you may want to watch the other videos. Okay, if you purchase the solo version of the product, you get all the training and all the steps, you get other reference material, but then it's up just for you, only you are licensed to take the training. But you can follow this whole process I'm about to describe because the license is at least for one year. Uh, I would recommend you go for two years and you can extend it uh, beyond that if you like. And you can follow the process that I'll describe in just a minute, in a moment. Um, but if you buy the team version, then it's you and 10 people who um, you know, could come from operation, or certainly other people in the maintenance department, supervisors, maintenance technicians, but you could have someone from operations and production look at it and engineering and, and so on. The idea is that everyone now understands what it is we're trying to do, what the, how everybody benefits from this process, uh, how they can contribute to the process and it can demystify all the new jargon and some of the technologies being used. So there's another video that describes the product version so I won't dwell on, on that any longer. So step number one of the MRT process is to take the introductory training, there's quite a bit of it, but that explains why does equipment fail, why do we have reactive maintenance and what can we in general terms do about it. Now when I say in general terms it's it's kind of what's covered on a lot of other courses to say these are all the things we must be good at. The trouble is if that's all it does you are then on your own to try and implement planning and scheduling and RCM and condition monitoring and all those other areas, you know. This process gives you the background and then says exactly what to do afterwards. So, step one is to go through the introductory training so it all sort of makes sense. And if you've got the team version of the product, then you can involve uh, other key people so they also understand what it is we're going to be trying to do. The initial training has a really good introduction to all of this. It does describe the ART, Asset Reliability Transformation Process, so that you can see you know, the full recommendation of all the things you'd need to do to go from reactive to kind of like gold standard. So MRT is a subset of that. It is, as discussed in other videos, it's if you sort of feel, you know, I'm, I don't want to sort of go and do all the things necessary to get to gold standard just now. I'd like to kind of keep it a bit simpler, keep it in the maintenance department and just get sort of the end the reactive maintenance. So then there's a lot of training and, and the sort of the fundamental knowledge really gets into the details of, of why condition monitoring works, why equipment fails, how we know it's failing you know, the difference precision maintenance and lubrication and all those things make. It's just good background information. And then a really good section on problem solving. You know, you're going to come across 
um, <clears throat> problems in your plant, the reason why the equipment's failing. And while the training will cover a lot of very common root causes of failure, like lubrication, the way it's operated, the way rotating machinery is aligned and balanced and how the fastening is performed and so on, our problem solving module goes into sort of root cause analysis and gives you a bit of a methodology to try and get to the root cause of why equipment fails. There's eight hours of, of that training and you know whether you go through it all right away is up to you but I would recommend you do. It's really going to help you understand what it is we're trying to do without yet going into all the steps. I would suggest that you involve others if you've got the team version um, uh, for this awareness training as well. Now, if you've just gone through the modules I just described, you at this point don't need to go through any of the awareness training um, modules um, unless you sort of think, oh, what, what does that mean again? Tell me about infrared analysis again. Tell me about RCM again. Tell me about criticality again. Rather than jumping back into those other videos, you know, these modules, the essential elements, toolbox talks, manager briefings, management uh, manager training, sort of deep dives into all these topics we talk about, and then skills training is actually mostly on vibration analysis. Um, you can use that training yourself to get a quick refresher on those topics or to understand some of the topics in more detail. Um, but And it, obviously there's going to be overlap between this and the other training, but this is just sort of focused on individual topics. But you can get other people involved as well. Okay, so, you know, this is this uh, awareness training is very interactive. You can slide things along and click and drag and... Um, you know, it's just a slide at the time rather than it all being video. Um, little interactive infrared camera and, you know, all these cool things. And lots and lots of 3D animations and all that in the videos and in, these, uh, in this awareness training. Okay, so now hopefully people have an idea of what this is all about. And we're not going to go a long way with awareness training right now. We'll come back to that in a moment. So step number two is we need to um, assess your current state. We need to sort of say, well, okay, are we truly, truly, in all of the areas that we have identified, are we really starting from scratch? Or um, have we already made some progress in certain areas? So we give you this cool little tool you can go through and you can score yourself from one to five in all of those areas and so say, oh yeah, no, I haven't done anything about that, 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 and that. Oh, but here I'll give myself a score of two. Here we actually do a really good job. I'll score four or five. Anyway, so you can ask the question, <clears throat> what are you doing well? Where do you need help? <clears throat> and where do you need to even start? And the spreadsheet tool will help you do that. So this is what the spreadsheet tool <clears throat> main page looks like. Now this is actually the ART tool and the control, the red one there and, and the fourth one down, is where you're going to be focusing your attention uh, yeah, in that area there. And with each of the recommended practices, you see the number down the side, this is just for um, the planning and scheduling and this is just the first 11 of them. Um, you can see there's a quick title, a description, and then that's where you can score yourself, you know, from zero, which means you haven't done anything, four, which means you're really doing well, and five means you're tip top, like maybe you are gold standard already. But there you can, um, <clears throat> you it, it tracks when you're making progress so that you can trend that progress over time. Um, you can assign tasks to people and tell if they're overdue and all of that. So just a good handy um, progress monitoring tool, but also a planning tool so that you can see who's doing what and um, who's behind and where are you up to date. So in this little bit, for example, there's three recommended practices. You know, one was scored <clears throat> four, which we're saying, you know, four and five means you've kind of done it. Four means you can improve on it, but five certainly means you've done it. Whereas anything below four means it's still definitely in progress. So there we can, you know, we've got dates, um, we can say, well, we're hoping to be at score four by that date. And you can assign it to people, in this case, Mick Smith. And when you do that, you will see this little color-coded bar. 
um, in this case, for the very first step, you know, cooperation between operations and maintenance, um, the first bar means you're sort of two thirds the way through, uh, the, you're making progress, and then one third is complete. Um, and so it's just a handy tool. And when you choose to go on with ART, you can then fill out all the other bits as well. Step three. Now we're going to go further with our sort of awareness training. I talked a little bit about this in step one, but we're going to use the same training I described to bring in other people. And again, you can do, do this, these things in parallel, but certainly while you're making your assessment and you're talking to people, you can start involving a few more people um, so that they understand uh, what you're trying to achieve. Now that we've sort of, we've we understand what we're trying to do, we've involved a few people and so on. We're going to start at step A, the first step, recommended practice number one, which I won't, I'm not going to go through every uh, recommended practice now, but the point is the training, you, you'll play the videos and you can see what it is you're supposed to be doing, why it's important, what we're, you know, <clears throat> what we're recommending that you do. And when you go through that, you can then make an assessment. I mean, we've sort of been through an assessment step, but you can certainly look at it and say, well, um, do I need to make, uh, do I need to get started in that area? Do we already have some progress in that area? And you can score it. And then you're going to, you know, look at the training, make the changes necessary and record your progress. With, with some of these recommended practices, it's going to take, time to get to a high level of proficiency you know where you're really doing it well but you can say that maybe right now i'm going to give myself a score of one out of five but then i'm going to do what the recommended practice videos say that you should do so you will do them um, it, it might mean that you're Investing in a CMMS might be that you're creating a master asset list, you might be doing something with spares, doing something with condition monitoring, whatever. And as you make progress, you can go back to it and say, oh, I'm giving myself three out of five now. Hey, we've, we've been doing this for a few months now, we're doing it quite well. Um, we'll give ourselves four out of five. Um, um, <clears throat> but it's, it's worth saying that even though you can see on the right hand side, and there's there's other videos that sort of explain what all those uh, 12 steps are. Um, they are in parallel. It's not that you're going to do all the step A uh, recommended practices, then the step B, then the step C, then the step D. I've got, and I'll show you in a second, but there's charts and a little tool and everything that shows you exactly when we would recommend that you do them relative to each other. You know, it's like, you shouldn't try and do this yet because you need these other things in place. If you sort of try to jump ahead, then you're going to find, oh, people aren't on board or we don't have this information yet to be able to do that. Or, you know, um, it's the reason a lot of programs fail. You know, sometimes it can seem easiest. Oh, I'm just going to go out and buy a vibration analyzer and then you wonder why the program doesn't work. I'm going to hire consultants to do RCM and they give you a, a report and a big bill perhaps, but you're not ready to implement it yet. And so there's a lot of time and money wasted. So we guide you through the process. And of course, once you've done recommended practice number one, uh, you can look at recommended practice number two. As I say, these things are in parallel. We can start two and three and four before we've finished one. And <clears throat> you know, it, there's lots of training on, on all of this, but we can certainly um, if it's not something that you're going to do, you can say, well, Sally's going to do that, Fred's going to do that, and you can sign the tasks and make sure that they actually do get done. Uh, but I do want to say, okay, so then the next step is to do step A of recommended practice number three. Um, it might seem like, oh my goodness, 78. But there really are more than 78 things you have to do. Because we are going to be doing condition monitoring to see the future. We're going to be implementing uh, lubrication and cleaning and precision maintenance tasks so that we have fewer failures. We're going to have planning and scheduling and, well, planning and scheduling so everything's 
organised and people are following procedures, really much more efficient work. We're going to have spares management so we're not wasting money, but so that the spares are in good conditions and we're not wasting time. Um, we're doing PM optimization so we know we're doing the right work. There's just a lot of things we have to do and we should do them in the right order in order to have success. Um, and then one day we'll get to the end where we're doing, you know, step L, recommended practice number 78, and you can go, high fives everyone, you know, uh, we're there. But in truth, even though you might start uh, <clears throat> recommended practice 78, it might mean there's a lot of other recommended practices where you're still, you've made some progress, you're reaping some rewards from it, but you know you can get better. So you might be just giving yourself a score of, you know, three out of five, so we can keep making improvements. Um, in some cases, the recommended practices are really just asking you to make an assessment of how well something is functioning. And in other cases, most cases, they're saying, this is what you should do, this is how you should do it, this is why you should do it, this is when you should do it. So all it leaves is for you to go and do it. And as I mentioned, there's overlap. The little orange, so there's I don't know if you can see it very well in the video. There's 52 little boxes there, and we're sort of saying, you know, step, no, recommended practice number one um, is to make sure a maintenance manager exists, and that's the first thing you're going to do. And then you're going to do the next one, and the next one. Um, the little green one is really, the little green box indicates that that's when you've made an assessment and you really think that, yes, there's really good relationship between maintenance and uh, operations um, and you, it's just going to take time before you've really achieved that. But we're giving you all the training and the tools to help you build that relationship so they understand what you're trying to do. Anyway, I'm getting into the details here. But we can go through all of the steps and all of the recommended practices and just see that we've really tried to lay them out very clearly when you should do them and why you should do them. So. We've just tried to make it as, as easy as possible. Too many really good people who have been on other training courses or our training courses, our previous training courses, really working hard, really wanting the best of their programs, just have not had success. They've gone <clears throat> months and years and years and still they would say, oh, we're still having a lot of reactive maintenance. Our condition monitoring program is okay, but the planning and scheduling doesn't work very well, and you know, and then programs get cancelled. And um, we really want this to be successful. We want you to be successful, and we think this is the best way for you to have success. To just guide you through the process step by step, trying to make it as clear as possible, so that you can be successful. So I hope that helps you to understand what the training is going to enable you to do and how it's going to work. And I hope you agree that it will help you be successful um, ending the reactive maintenance in your plant.